Today on In the Wood Yard, we've got deliveries. People want wood, I'm gonna bring it to them. It's time to chuck some wood. Here we go. So what I've got today is two deliveries. I got one this morning and one this afternoon. Absolutely great day to be here. There's hardly any wind. Clouds are breaking up a little bit. We're supposed to have partly sunny skies. I haven't seen the sun now in about, I don't know, four or five days. So it'll be nice to see that again. Now, I got a comment from a person it's new to the channel just the other day, and it's a good comment, and I've heard it a couple times before. Actually, it was kind of a question comment. Um, what they said was, is, I can't believe that having all your wood just thrown into these bins, that the wood dries. And their question was, is, how come you don't properly stack your wood? Well, it's a good question. I used to stack wood. I used to waste my time stacking wood because I wanted to know how much wood I had, and I had a limited space which is one of the reasons why you stack wood, because you want to compress it into a nice organized way that you know how much you have, and it's kind of neat and organized. Well, when you have the volume I do, and if you watch any of the people that have full-time, big-scale commercial operations with firewood, they don't stack wood. They just don't. There's a few places I've seen that have stacked it into totes because they deliver in totes, and that's fine if that's the way they do it, but I think that's a waste of time. From what I have found, Throwing it into the bins loose, number one, saves me a buttload of time. I mean, a ton. It just goes directly right in the bins here, from the splitter, up the elevator, and into the bin. We move the elevator, goes up into the bin. If you watch the videos, you've seen how it works. So we're eliminating a lot of touching of the wood, because as a lot of you know, the more you touch the wood, the less money you make, because it's time. Time is the big thing here. You want to touch it as little as possible. The big operations, the guys that I've seen that have uh, the places that sell truckloads, semi-truckloads of firewood at a time, they don't touch the wood. They never touch it. So I'm going to try to get to that eventually. That's kind of my plan is to work towards very little touching of the wood. Um, so what the answer is, I guess, is that I want the wood to dry as fast as possible, number one. I want to touch it as little as possible. I want to put as little effort into it as possible. Uh, I'm still doing a lot because I am loading it in by hand. Um, one of the reasons I do that is, is I want the wood to be clean. And yes, there are guys I know that use buckets and they scoop it off the ground. But I cannot tell you how many customers I have had, the new customers, I should say, that ask me, how do you load your wood? Do you use a skid steer? Do you use a bucket? Because the last guy that I ordered from, I got all the wood was just smeared in mud and dirt and grass and rocks and bark. And I got wheelbarrows full, literally wheelbarrows full of crud that I had to clean up. And the wood, when I brought it into the house, had mud on it. And as it melted, all that mud and dirt came off. So I'm gaining customers by having really clean wood. That is something that people want. Think about it yourself. Do you want someone walking in with uh, mud on their feet all through your house? Because that's what your wood is if it's all smeared in mud. And uh, a lot of people think that that's okay. It is not. It's not. That's not what people want. So, on to the, uh, the stacking. Um, yes, if you are in a residential area, yes, if you're um, having wood for yourself where it's a small amount, say you've only got eight cords of wood that you're burning in a year, say you got, you know, 24 face cords uh, of wood that you burn for yourself, yeah, then stacking it is nice because what it does by stacking, you know how much wood you have, it's nice and neat and pretty looking, which if you're in a residential area in a neighborhood where you want people to think you are all perfect and you got everything organized, yes, that makes sense. Um, the other thing is, is if you stack it in a way that it's off the ground on pallets, single rows, maybe spaces between it, it's gonna dry pretty good that way. But these loose bins that I have that we fill up, the wood can breathe tremendously. The, the air flows right through them. By stacking it, not stacking it, by just piling it into these bins like I have, it's off the ground on pallets. We've got walls on the side. And I'll show you those in just a second, a little closer. They dry fantastic. It's out in the open here, and I save myself a ton of work. So that is why I don't stack wood. Time, uh, I don't care what it looks like out here. It doesn't matter. It's gonna dry better. Um, effort that I have to put into it, um, those are the reasons why. So, there you go. It's time to chuck some wood.
There it is, third of a cord, face cord, Rick Rank Row is in the truck. Now, in defense of guys that do stack wood, like my brother Ken, he does stack his wood, but he has totally different circumstances than me. I'm selling a face cord or two face cords or two thirds of a cord or a full cord at a time. And I know my truck, as far as the size of the box, it's a six and a half foot box. If I have it level, thrown in loose, it's a face cord. So I was throwing a little bit extra, so there's a little crust to it, so people get a little bit extra. And I'm okay with that because my time is more important than a couple sticks of wood. So people are happy, I'm happy, everyone's happy. Now, my brother Ken, like I said, his situation is different. He has people that pick up wood at his place. And so he has probably, I would say, I'm just gonna guess, eight to 10 regular customers that pick up wood at his place. And because he knows how much they want, he stacks a pile of wood for each person. And he tells them, this is your wood. He's got one guy in particular, every year he gets 20 face cords, which is about seven full cords. And so he stacks that block of wood and that's whatever his name is, Joe. He says, hey Joe, this is your wood right here. Come get it whenever you want. And uh, what he'll do is during the winter now, he'll stack that pile for that guy. And then in the spring, once things dry up, that guy comes and gets his wood and then he takes care of putting it in his shed stacks it so that the following winter it's ready to go because he's heating with wood this guy and a lot of the people he sells to are heating with wood so they're buying bigger amounts and so ken will tell them you know if he gets a guy that calls him and says hey i want they go by face cords all the time that's what they all use and in our part of the country midwest face cords is kind of what you go by i know out east they go by full cords third of a cord two thirds of a cord down south they go by ricks or ranks or rows in Canada, they go by bush cords. We go by face cords here. So one face cord is a third of a cord, which is what this is. So he'll tell that guy, they call him and say, hey, I want, uh, I want 12 face cords. Kenny will say, okay, I'll mark the rows. I'll make a big red X on them, whatever, with some spray paint. You take this much. He just tells them when they come and they pick it up. Or when he has people that want wood from him that he delivers and he charges a little bit more, um, the people will tell him, I want 10 face cords. So Kenny knows, he's got all of his rows, he just takes 10 face cords, he'll probably make three trips. He does about a full cord at a time with his trailer and he delivers it. So that's why it works for him, because um, he has his measurements ahead of time, he knows what he's doing. But my time is more important than um, being all pretty and organized with stacked wood. Now I have stacked wood in the past, and I've done it for demonstration purposes, but my days of stacking all of my wood are done because I am each year I am selling five, 600 face cords, so 200 full cords a year, I don't wanna stack it. Now, there are guys I know, I've seen their channels and guys I see around that they stack all their wood in nice, neat piles, which is great, it looks nice and everything, they know what they've got, and then they stack it into their truck or their trailer so it looks all pretty and they know exactly how much they have. To me, that's just a waste of time. I have seen the light. You should see the light, it's pretty. Less work, less touching more profits, more time for you to do the things you really want to do. And if that's cut more wood, go at, go for it. But stacking, it's not for everybody. It's not for me anymore. Okay, we're going to do a delivery. Wood. Out, empty truck, on to the next one. I am back in the wood yard from my first delivery. While I was uh, leaving to go to do that delivery, I got a text from one of my longtime customers and he says, hey Chris, we're out of wood. When can you bring some? I said, how about now? He said, really? I said, absolutely. I'm in between my two deliveries here, so I've got time. So he wants a face cord of mixed hardwood. That's what he always gets. He does about four uh, face cords a year. So a little over a full cord, and uh, he said he's just bought out, so he wants some more. So when some people call and they say, whenever it's convenient, if I'm available, I try to do it right away. That way it's done. I, get, I strike while the iron's hot. I don't let it sit. I try to deliver it as fast as I can. Uh, that's one of the things in business I think is important is uh, fast service. People really like that. So we're going to throw a third of a cord, a face card. A rick a rink a row a truckload into the truck right now i'm going to climb into my playpen here um, this is all mixed hardwood a little bit of everything in here mostly ash and maple 
elm, um, stuff like that. That's what's in here. So we're gonna throw it in right now. the wood it's in so what I did is I took from this corner right here you can see it's kind of empty and what I want to do is just kind of start like I did here and just keep going this direction and empty this bin that direction so then we can refill here so you can see I creamed off all the top because this was peaked pretty high all through here I took all the top stuff off and uh, have been kind of skimming off the you know the gray stuff on the top that's really good and dry but all the stuff is really dry it's been I don't know six, seven months, eight months. You can see here on this end, I didn't touch this end. This is all the gray wood. So, and as high as this is, that's what this whole thing was at one time. And all the wood from the original big bin, which is down here, got emptied. And then we started refilling over here. So this was uh, uh, 60, 70, 80 face cores. I don't know, it was a lot. So I emptied this already and this has been refilled and I still have all this to go yet here. So there's all kinds of wood that needs to get split. So I'll start on this probably next week. We'll start splitting. I want to get this done before we get a big dump of snow, which is supposedly coming in a week. So I'd like to get that done. So that is the plan. And uh, so as I empty the bins and I just work my way down, we'll start refilling on the other end. And that's kind of what I did with the oak here. This was all white oak on this end. So I've been taking white oak from this end and the white oak ends about here somewhere. And then everything else down this way was all red oak so I emptied all that up to here and then if you see the next bin over that one's been creamed off the top so I kind of took the gray wood the stuff that was in the sun and wind for many months because it's going to be the driest obviously and just work my way down and then eventually once I empty this one out then we'll start on this one because this is the next oldest and then again here too I'll just start I'll actually I'll probably start on that end and work my way down because we filled from that end and uh, usually when you fill the bin it takes weeks to do it so that's what's going to happen and the next bin over is i gotta think is that the hickory i think that's the hickory i'm not sure i gotta go look because i haven't taken any from there in a while yeah that's hickory well there's some oak on this end or actually there's some maple right here and then this is all hickory from right here all the way down to right here and you can see i've been creaming stuff off the top of that and then this is beach right here this whole end was the, all the beach that we had separated out. We just put it on the end of the hickory because if it gets mixed in with it, it's no big deal. And then this pile here is all um, hard maple with a little bit of ironwood because right there's a piece of ironwood. So that's what's in this pile here. And this is uh, probably the next oldest. And uh, then at the same time, we did all that over there. And that is all of the... Um, hard maple that was put in I've been eating away at this gradually here too but the hard maple dries really fast so this stuff is all six seven months old now and then we've got all the oak to do over there yet and we've got the load of mixed stuff that we bought and the pile that's over there by the processor that's ash that's all got to get done so it's going and then I also have a customer of mine I should say a customer a viewer yeah still a customer um that is moving and he's got a whole bunch of cherry and i'm hopefully going to go get a bunch of that too and because my cherry is down to just that little bit right there and uh this wood over here is what goes to my pizza place uh it goes to parm that's all the stuff that he likes that size and i've taken well over half of what was here well i've probably taken two-thirds of it about a third of it is left if that um so that's getting down there but he'd be fine with any of the other stuff too but I tried to give him all the smaller stuff because he really likes that. So, okay, we're going to do a delivery right now. Well, I'm gonna climb back in my playpen play with the wood some more. I'm gonna throw another face cord, a third of a cord into the truck for my next delivery. And I think this is the last one of the day. I got one pending, but they haven't got back in touch with me yet. So this might be the last one today. This one, I'm not actually gonna be delivering it for a couple more hours yet. It's gonna be getting dark by the time I even deliver this one because it's at the 
very end of the day today. So I'm gonna get her loaded up and uh, be ready. Today I emptied all this. Basically that was two face cords or two thirds of a cord right in here. There's the load in the truck. And uh, this delivery is not for about another, I don't know, hour and a half, two hours, something like that. By the time I do the delivery, it's gonna be getting dark. So you know what that means? Right now you need to go watch all my other videos. There's 1300 on my channel. Otherwise I'll be back tomorrow morning, 5.30 a.m. for those of you that have to be here, which is all of you. That's it for today, folks. Good night, everyone. <laughs>